Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be Harry Muppet, and we are going to be casting the final series of games for the Zotac Monthly Cup, which was run back in April. And yes, I know I've taken my sweet time getting around to it. Part of it has been the cough. Part of it as actually it's mostly just been the cough. The cough is still there. I do not know when it is going to go away. And I don't want to just leave this sitting there for months and months and months. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to have a crack. Down the bottom right side, our first finalist is CM Stormpolt, a Red Terran player. Now he did an absolutely awesome job in the semi-final series against Tails. Tails are Protoss player, and, and it really got down to the wire in the third game. Basically, uh, you should go back and watch it, but let me just say that it did involve workers having to, uh, SCVs having to go out and defend their town, defend their base. And he managed to eke a win out after that, so that was absolutely awesome play. And on the top left side, we do have Snoot. Snoot, another very, very awesome player in the semi-final series in the third game. He just macroed his ass off. He was building, oh, I can't remember, I think he was building 30 roaches at one time or something like that. It was absolutely insane. They both traded armies, but Snoot just went straight back up to a max in like a, a matter of minutes. <coughs> and just went in there and just steamrolled our... Uh, other Protoss player Sage. He was a Protoss player Sage. He was going against in the semi final. So there we go. Sage was knocked out by Snoot. And Tails was knocked out by Polt. But now we are down to the grand final. The final, the grand final, whatever. And it is going to be between our red Terran player CM Storm Polt and our blue Zerg player Liquid Snoot. And we are going to see how this shit goes down. We do have a. Expansion coming down off the spawning pool. Spawning pool looks like it went down first, so that's pretty sweet. He's going to get the queen out nice and soon. He's actually getting lings out before he gets the queen out, which is very interesting. So he's not going for a uh, a macro heavy sort of thing. He's trying to get the lings out first, maybe do a bit of harass. It's not going to do too well though, because I mean he can uh, he can ward off this base quite quickly, and I do not expect somebody of Pult's uh, calibre to be surprised by the links coming in, especially not with the Reaper coming out. <coughs> and there we go, there's the first Reaper coming out now, he's not producing a second. This is obviously just for scouting purposes of some sort, or I'm not really sure, looks like these links may be just for scouting purposes. Gonna go up and try and get the Watchtowers maybe? No, they're just uh, running around. Here comes the Reaper, he's gonna take out a couple of links, he's gonna see the expansion, but uh, he can't have not been expecting that. And here we go, very fast expansion from the Terran player as well. He's building it on the low ground. Not sure if I agree with that, because the Terran player does not have enough to push these lings off. And this guy is going to have to cancel and just run away. And they're going to have to hide behind their gate, because there's not much else they can do. Although he's going to go out, he's going to give it a try. One SCV and two Marines, but this is not going to work. This is not nearly enough. He's bringing out some more SCVs though, he really really wants to save this command center. And the Zerg, he chooses not to go in and try and finish it off. He might have been able to finish it off there, if he just could stuck on it, but then again I'm not sure. Regardless though, it is going to get finished, uh, it's probably finished off with about half health. Meanwhile the Reaper coming down, he's going to be running around, but there is a Queen coming down the ramp, so he's going to just jig past it get up on the main thing but there's a queen already up here so he's not going to be able to do all that much anymore there's queens on both base and there is a third queen over here so really he might get a bit of a run by here the queens are a bit out of position but they are quite fast on the creep now so there he goes he does not manage to finish off any drones he's got two kills but I think they were both the zerglings that he took out early in the game <coughs> so there we go not Either player not really able to do that much. He took a, quite a hunk of health out of the command center, but it still goes up, still becomes an orbital. And he's building a nice little gate here, stopping some Ling runbys going into this side. But of course, the Lings could always go around the other side without too many problems. <coughs> so this is going to be a little bit effective, but not too effective. Got that Overlord scouting, he's doing pretty well. The one Reaper plus two Hellions coming in. They see this very fast third base as well. So they might go in, might try and attack that. 
It's going to be pretty effective. The queens are going to take ages to get out there. And the lings are just going to get roasted by these hellions. I don't think he has speed yet. No, he does not have speed. So the lings will be easily kited. I'm not sure what he can do really to uh, stop his hatchery being taken out here. And these guys will take a long time to do it. But there we go. He's getting a roach warren. Getting a couple of evo chambers here. So he's putting up a nice bit of gate there. He's not worried about this hatchery. He's worried about the hellions running in and taking out his drones. But he's definitely got that covered right now. There's no way the hellions can get in here. Maybe there's a little gap there. But I don't think the hellions can fit. They're way too beefy. And the Terran player should just... Uh, continue messing with this hatchery I guess just continue taking it down why not reducing the health why not and he's got a Viking out so far so this is a very nice bit of early tech taking out the overlords you could expect the Terran to do this but you'd usually not expect the Terran to do this in the first 10 minutes usually it takes him a little bit longer but he has got gone for the uh, three building the whatchamacallit so he's got barracks factory and then straight into starport he has not built any other buildings yet, any other major production buildings. So, very, very fast starboard there, and he is going to use it as much as he can to take out these overlords. <coughs> Base over here is finally finished. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, so if only the Reapers had the building attack, they would probably have taken that down by now, but unfortunately they do not. And they're just going to run back. One Queen's going to come down. I don't know if you saw that. But here we go, the roach is coming out now, so that is why he left the queen out there, because he's not worried about the hellions anymore. He's got the roaches out on the field. They might still be able to run through, but it's getting a lot more dangerous with the roaches out there. They're going to take a lot more losses. And this viking, not doing a very good job at finding overlords. He's found one so far. He is going to find the second one here. Well, very, very easily. And there we go, he's going to take it out. But unfortunately that will delay this command center from landing for another minute or so, which is not very good at all. <coughs> and here we go. Let's have a look at the Terran army. It's not very big so far. He's got his production facilities up now, so he's going to make it a hell of a lot bigger. He's getting a nice bit of wall there, which might help against the roaches. Probably won't help too much, but it'll help a little bit. These Hellions doing a bit of a dance. The Reaper seems to have uh, died at some point. And yeah, they're trying to find a way to do something, but it's just not working. They could perhaps get in here. Run through these rocks when they get taken down. But I'm sure the Zerg will have an answer for Hellions coming through this gap. I'm sure he, he means to uh, take these rocks out. ASAP. Just as the Terrans are taking out these rocks. So they managed to land the command center. This overlord got taken out as well, so this Viking's got three kills so far. Done a very, very good job. Uh, Zerg, of course, not getting supply capped. He's uh, way too smart for that. But he has got a whole bunch of upgrades coming out. He has got Ling slash Ultralis upgrades on the way, so he is not going for the Roach Hydra ranged upgrades. He is going for the Ling slash Ultra upgrades. And with the infestors, infest, infestation pit covered down, I would not be surprised to see a hive come down and then an ultralist nest, nest, ultralist pit, whatever it's called, because it uh, it definitely looks like ultralist may be on the way for our Zerg player. But here we go. There's the hive coming down, and what do we got going for the Terran player? He's just going for a lot of uh, bio at the moment. Getting out some medevacs, getting up level two armor upgrades, level two armor and weapons, sorry, and shields for his marines. So he's going to do very well, and we can expect some uh, drop action going on soon. But he really, really needs... He's not teched out for Marauders at the moment. He needs to start getting teched out for Marauders very soon. Because otherwise, these Ultras are just going to do massive amounts of damage to him. But there we go. He is actually building Infestors. So maybe, maybe not. Pure Ultralis tech. But there we go. I didn't even see a scan come down to take those out. They may not have uh, completely landed, but... These ones did need a scan. He's going to stim in. He's going to destroy them all. And there we go. Good job by the Terran player. The Zerg player is going to see this. And he's going to say, alright, let's go in. Terran player, however, is ready for it. You see all the Zergs going in there. That means you cannot get past this wall. So he's going to have to move up here. And there he goes. He's going to move up there. He heard the sound of a widow mine. And he just ran away. So not good for him. Whole bunch of widow mines up here though. And they are going to do quite a bit of damage to these lings. 
We've got to do quite a bit of splash damage as well, but look at all these Banelings, man. Where's the Widow Mine when you need them? Widow Mine, is it going to go off on? No, there's no Widow Mine going off on the Banelings. Banelings somehow. <coughs> Running through those field of Widow Mines, and I mean, sending in the Lings first. Very, very good tactic by the Zerg player. He must have known that there were going to be Widow Mines there, so he uh, sent all his Lings in there, sacrificed them. And there, here we go, here's the Bailings. The Bailings have just got speed right now. They're going to try and run in, they do barely any damage, because there's so many Marines taking them out. And yeah, good job. But here we go, here's the Ultralis Nest coming down. What's... Ultralis Cavern, that's what the damn thing's called. So there we go, Ultralis coming down, he's got 3-3 three, three upgrades. These Ultralis are just going to be massive. And the Terran player needs to scout out this Ultralis Cavern. He needs to find out that it's coming. If he does not find out it's coming, and then six or seven Ultralis get laid down, and he does not have the Marauder tech on the way, he is going to be so royally screwed, it is not even funny. So he needs, needs to get it done. Needs to find out about that Ultralis cavern. Where is the damn thing? It's uh, not at his main base. There it is. It's on his uh, expansion over there, or his third base. It's technically the most well defended because of this gate, other than the main base, but here we go. The Infestor's coming in. They did a bit of fungal stuff there, they so pretty good, they've taken out quite a bit of marines. These guys trying to run away, trying to get away from the fungal growth. But the leagues are all over the place, the bailings are all over the place. This is a very, very scary force coming in here, trying to take everything out. The marines have no choice but to run, and they are just not doing a good job. This massive amount of lings just took them all out. <coughs> the Terran still has a fairly large army, you can see he's doing a drop over here. He's going to see the infestation pit. He has not seen the Ultralis Cavern. So there we go. It's a bit of genius actually putting it in the uh, second base because the Terran player has not seen it. But yeah, he really, really needs to see it. And here we go. Look at all these uh, Lings coming back. He's going to run past the Changelings, but he's not going to attack him. He's a bit smarter than that. And the Terran player is doing a very, very good job of just macroing up an army as soon as he's lost his initial one. I keep thinking these are Widow Mines, but they're not Widow Mines, they're Changelings. It's all over the place, Changelings. And there we go, this one Hellion. Got to try and count, kite all these uh, Lings. Got to try and keep that uh, Zelgnaga Watchtower in his control. Probably not going to happen though. And here we go, there's a couple of Ultralists out on the field. Very heavily upgraded, they got 3-3 three, three coming. And they've also got the Ultralist armor coming. That, that's going to be a little ways off. And they've got a crap load of Banelings as well, so Ultra Baneling Infester. Haven't seen this too much, but all three of these units are going to be very, very good. He's also got some Roaches and some Lings mixed in there. So this is going to be a very, very powerful army. I'd like to see some uh, tanks, I think. Tanks would uh, do pretty well against all these guys. I mean, tanks do well against Banelings and Lings. They do very well against uh, Roaches and Infesters. And Widow Mines are going to do a good job as well, but I mean, just tanks. If he could uh, somehow get the tanks out, then I reckon tanks would be awesome. But of course, the Zerg has the perfect counter for tanks, and that is the Viper with the Blinding Cloud. And Blinding Cloud's so good against the tanks, so uh, he may be able to neutralize the tanks quite well if he gets the tanks out, if he gets those Vipers out. But there we go, the Terran player's got to be holding on, but he is in a lot of trouble here. All those Banelings coming in, and he has to concentrate on the Ultras, and somehow still get the Infestors out, and I do not see it happening. It's just rolling on in here, and just doing a massive amount of damage. He's trying to get our forces, but the Zerg player, man, somehow the Terran player still, his uh, unit composition isn't that low. I mean, he's 132 to 168, he's losing quite a bit, but here we go, he's got a very nice chokehold here. He took out one of the Ultralists. He's going to go ahead, he's going to try and push these guys away. These guys are going to run away. Infestors are all out of energy. They've got no more Bailings left, so he's not a good position for him. And he's going to run in here. He's going to snipe out some Infestors. This is an excellent job for the Terran player. He's going to snipe out some more. The Zerg has got to save this Infestors, but he's lost six so far. That's seven going down. <coughs> and a suicide stim by the Terrans to get that eighth one. And then they jump into the dropships, run away. Very, 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 very awesome job there by the Terran player. But you can see the Infestors over here dropped a ton of Infested Terrans. Managed to scare this base away. Probably got a ton of SCVs killed by there. If we have a look at the income, the Zerg player is 20 ahead of the Terran player. 
and that is just that is fairly huge he's got four bases the Terran has four as well but with that huge attack there I think he lost quite a lot of SCVs he desperately needs to get more up but you can see this mules I mean <coughs> this massive amount of mules is going to shoot his middle income right up into the stratosphere and there we go he's back on top again mules was all he needed but here we go here's the army coming in bunch of lings they're going to go for this side you see the rocks down lings not that good at destroying rocks and here we go here's the minefield up here again for the terran player and this is going to take a lot of damage out for the zerg player but the zerg has the overseers he's got to roll in bit by bit to see these guys the terran player moving a bit out maybe he was hoping to snipe an overseer but not quite going to happen sending out a couple of bailings going to wipe out this small force He's being very pushy here. He wants the Zerg player to run in and get hit by those Widow Mines. Of course, Widow Mines not that good against Ultralis, but they're going to do quite a bit of damage still. We see two Ultras going down. This force getting chased away this way. This force getting chased away that way. And this force is in a lot of trouble. That's just too many Banelings. But they all get taken out with the small force at the front, taking out the supply depots. And the force manages to survive up the back. Meanwhile, these guys kiting all their life's worth. Managing to take out a lot of guys. You can see the Terran player is really getting a lot more marauders. He's uh, producing three marauders at once. A lot better than the one he was producing before. So he's definitely countering the Ultralis the best he can. He's got three free upgrades. He's got all the uh, upgrades he needs. Corvid Redactor. What the? Corvid Reactor. Is that like a... I don't know, maybe that's a medevac thing or a raven thing or something. I have no idea what that is. But there we go. <coughs> Zerg player might be thinking about a fifth base. Terran's already got his fifth base up here. He's getting a planetary on there, so good job on him, finally getting a planetary. I might have gotten one over there, but he got a orbital there, and he is going to get a massive amount of mules out over that. These marines, they are never getting home. They are never going home. And I've got to say, grats to the Terran player just for keeping the production up high enough. The Zerg player, man, he's got all the bases, he's got all the hatcheries, he's doing an excellent job. Look at these overlords, man. Great diversionary tactic there. And they're popping off the bloody uh, Widow Mines all over the place as well. Great job there by the Zerg player, using those overlords to set off the Widow Mines to scare the Terran player into popping off his stim to take him out. He's got to be worried about a Baneling drop from that position. But there we go, there was no Banelings in those Overlords, they were just a diversion and the Ultras come in, no Widow Mines left, Marines already stimmed and they just do a crap load of damage right there. And this expansion, all the SCVs getting taken out, and these guys coming down, going to wipe out the rest of these forces, are going to try to anyway, this Ultralist goes down, crap load of Corruptors, I don't know why the Corruptors are there, they've got to be able to take out the Medivacs maybe. And here we go, here's a fresh set of Widow Mines, or maybe they were the same ones as before. And yeah, look at these, these guys are out hunting for Medivacs, man. He knows the Medivacs are keeping these forces alive, and Corruptors are so beefy, man, it takes quite a lot of Marine Fire to actually take them out. So, good choice by the Zerg player, and there we go, though. He is preparing to go in there for another distraction, but, I mean, it's such a good choice. I mean, bloody uh, Overlords. They're so cheap to produce, relatively, only a hundred minerals. <coughs> and they're so beefy as well, you send them in over the Widow Mines and they'll probably survive. Just on 200 health, quite a bit of health, so there we go. Terran player, he's got this watchtower, he knows about this base, he was going to try and take it out. But he sees the forces coming in and he does not want any part of that, maybe yet. He's waiting for a bit more, he's going to try and choose to fortify this base instead. The action is going to be on this ramp right here between these two bases. He's going to get the Widow Mine set out there. He's uh, watching out for the Zerg player to come in there. He's setting Widow Mines out all over the place. Spacing them out very nicely. Sending out one Ling, one drone. The Zerg player knows they're coming out there. He uh, does not want to set off the Widow Mines with his uh, expensive units. A couple of Raven Bombs coming down on the Infestors. This is going to be absolutely awesome. Raven Bombs do massive amount of single target damage and a bunch of splash. And the single target... Uh, it's enough to take out the infestors completely. And there we go. Got a, a lot of Banelings coming in here though. We're going to have to stim back, run away. The Widow Mines got to do their job. Taking out a lot of Banelings there. Most of the Terran Force survives. Going to come in here. 
Raven Bomb's still going off, I think. He's starting to run out of energy, though, and the uh, infested Terran's being popped down, taking out one Raven. This force coming down. They're doing a very good job of taking out the uh, Ultralis, but the uh, fungal growth coming down from those infestors, doing a lot of damage to the Terran forces. And he's going to need some reinforcements over there straight away. He's building a crap ton of Ravens as well, which is good for them. You can see he's still got quite a few Widow Mines out there. Always worried about a counter from the Zerg player, just a bunch of Lings running into his main base. Always going to be a problem. And here we go, the Ravens. He's not watching his Ravens. He really needs to get that guy out of there. He really needs to get this guy out of there because, yeah, those guys don't have too much health left. But there we go. He's going to push in here. <coughs> he's going to tempt the fungal growth a little bit. But there we go. The Banelings are what he really has to worry about. And those Banelings going in there. But here we go. Widow Mine's coming in. They're not hitting the Banelings, though. But the Planetary Fortress is going to help out here a bit. Unfortunately, that means letting the Banelings into the mineral line, which is not good at all. Here come the Ultras, here come some Lings, they're going to go in there, they're going to do some damage. The Terran Force has been uh, knocked down quite a bit, but the Ultras are going to concentrate on this Planetary Fortress. Three Ultras, it has no chance, it has gone down right there. And the Zerg at a distinct advantage as of that point right there. Taking out that uh, Planetary Fortress, really doing some good job, and I think the Zerg has an advantage. I can't really say anybody had an advantage thus far up to the 30 minute mark but now I'm going to say that the Zerg player definitely has an advantage and we'll see <coughs> how he does with it okay, the Widow Mine's still there the Zerg hasn't been taken out the Widow Mines as much as possible, he's pretty happy just to uh, let them sit there and uh, knock them off with lings all over the place but the Widow Mine's very aggressive up here very aggressive, he's pushing the Ultras back, the Ultras don't want to go anywhere near the Widow Mines and there we go, they're getting really close though. They're hitting the Ultras directly now. Not the Ultras, the Infestors and the uh, Marines. Marauders going in there. They're still getting some fungal growth set off though. More Raven Bombs coming down on the Infestors. Really good at whittling down these uh, Infestor numbers. But the Ultras, man, they're so beefy. And they're really just going in, doing massive amounts of damage. And you can see that, I don't know if it was splash damage or what, but yeah, just... The Infestor's slowly getting taken out, bit by bit. He's building more Infestors, but the Raven's doing an excellent job of taking out these Infestors. Constantly taking them out. He's trying to split them up, but... Yeah, they're just getting taken out. Single target damage, enough to wipe out an Infestor. And they're just going down so fast. The Raven proving to be an excellent counter to the Infestors. Of course, Infestors, not much they can do against Ravens. They can fungal growth them, but they've got quite a lot of damage. Meanwhile, though, the Ultra Ling push out is continuing, and is just doing so much versus uh, versus this Marine Marauder force. Although this is a fairly large amount of Marine Marauders, with a whole bunch of medevacs coming up to support him. I think he should be able to make a push with this. He's made a push up there. He's getting the Ravens down, setting up some auto turrets. Not really any minerals left at this base anyway, so it's not going to be doing too much. But there we go. The force is coming in. He needs to move these guys in as well. But here we go, the Zerg player. He's got some spines down to sort of uh, prepare for that. But he is going to lose this base, I believe. And this is very bad for him because this is a very, very good mining base right here. He's going to send in one Ultra, but he was completely caught off guard by this attack. He was not prepared for it. And this hatchery is going to go down. And the question is how many of these drones are also going to go down. The Terran player is going to try and get a few of them but he's going to miss most of them I think actually he's going to get about half of them and a nice fungal growth coming down there at the perfect time just when he could have been chasing workers the fungal growth down, goes down traps half his army but the rest is going to get wiped out meanwhile the Terran player is going down here <coughs> and I believe that with that move the Terran player has equalized the game somewhat I'm not going to say if he uh... but there he goes um... actually I guess he more than equalized the game. I guess the uh, put the Zerg player right at the end of his rope, and <coughs> yeah, you can see by the uh, the amount of minerals and uh, these long distance mining from these drones here, the uh, the Zerg was absolutely unprepared for the a sh of hard hard push on this hatchery. He basically his entire game was riding on this hatchery, and you can see he's got 75 minerals. He does not have enough. To build enough hatchery, you'd have to long distance mine all the way around here to get another one. And once that hatchery got taken out, he's like, you know what? GG. Um, 
or Q, Q or WW in this case. Um, yeah, <coughs> he just um, he didn't have the economy. He was crippled economically at that point, and he, I mean his army had also just gone down, just gone really, really far down. The Terran mining off two bases probably had a lot to do with it, but yeah, he I mean he just he didn't get this expansion up fast enough. He should have got this expansion off a couple of minutes ago, I reckon. Have something to fall back on and also get more income. But maybe the Terran play was attacking this and I didn't notice it, but yeah, there we go. Losing this hatchery just lost the game for the Zerg player. So, there we go. That is game one of the Zotac Monthly Cup Grand Final running back in April. And CM Stormpolt has shown here that he knows how to macro against our uh, extremely good macro player Liquid Snoot. He is constantly getting out the forces. I mean, the, the Zerg's macro is awesome through the entire game, and the Terran managed to hold off on it, managed to get the right forces, and managed to survive. And eventually, he managed to hit back and uh, do some nice damage, so good on him. And thank you very much for watching. This is Harry Muppet, and uh, I'll see you guys in the next few games.